more sense. I don't I don't do proper YouTube stuff, right? So it's not, you know, it's it's casual. It's still a stream. It's just people who miss the stream can look this up forever. <clears throat> so hey, welcome. Today I am going to be making this guy. So this art has been done by Sugarmochi. You can check her out on I guess Twitch is probably the best place, right? Sugarmochi, uh, twitch.tv slash sugarmochi art. Uh, it is of Fruity, or it's Fruba, uh, Fruity's lady friend, I assume, from from the conveniently placed pepperoni. I assume it's a lady friend. Um, and it's actually, you know, really, it's, it's a beautiful piece of artwork, but it's really simply done. And uh, just a couple of filters in OBS to make it look great. I do not have these up yet. So let's bring these up. We are looking for the OBS move transition is one filter and OBS stream effects is the other. So move transition, OBS plugin and stream effects for OBS studio are the two extensions that you need in OBS. You probably have or want these anyway because they're fantastic. Move transition is the one that I use. So if I hit that transition on my screen, that's the move transition. It's two separate scenes just duplicated, move stuff around. And then when you run the move transition, it animates between the two places instead of doing a fade or a cut. Uh, it also comes with a secret plugin, which we're going to use. So I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, stream effects is just full of amazing plugins. It's just full of amazing filters, plugins and extensions uh, and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, drop filter, uh, drop shadows, blurs, every, it's just, it's amazing. So you want this one anyway, for sure. Uh, we're going to use w probably just one for now. We might use two of them uh, to make to make this animation look good just because of a glitch in OBS. So we're just working around a glitch that the stream effects plugin does well and the the OBS one does does not. Uh, and the rest of it's just images. So I'm going to delete this scene and clean up and we're going to start from scratch with the original images and put this thing together. So I'll delete that. Uh, I'm also going to delete my filters here, which we'll come back and recreate. So I have my three images. As you can see, slightly different sizes, different positions, different placements. Uh, I don't actually really need this one with the open mouth because I have the, the mouth on its own. You could use either. So because these are basically identical images between the two, once they're overlaid, you're not going to notice whether the whole thing is fading in or if it's just the mouth. So, I might, you know, in fact, I'll just leave the mouth off. Let's do it with just these two. What we're going to want is the one with the open mouth on top of the closed mouth. As you can see, it's already there. And we want them same size, same position. Easiest way to do that is go to the, the one that's already in the place we want, which is a closed one. Right click, transform, copy, transform. And then go to the, the other one, right click, transform, paste, transform. Uh, didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because I actually made a change to the transform in the other one first. So before we do that, we're going to edit the transform on this first one. Uh, and we're going to come to this bounding box type. So what this does is it lets you have, so you can see there's a position, the size, which is going to change as you drag it around and resize it. The bounding box is going to set the size differently. It's going to set the size of the box and then automatically adjust the image to fit. By changing this to scale to inner bounds, that's kind of the, the best default setting. It's going to resize it to fit without reshaping it. Now the size that matters is this bounding box size rather than the size. And if I resize it on, on here, it's going to affect the bounding box size and not the original one. So that can say 784. Now when I copy the transform and paste it to this other easier to right click down here, transform, paste transform. Now it fits perfectly. Why? Because it's copied the size over and resized it to fit. And if I hide that visible, invisible, I can have the talking mouth. I'm going to take these two and I'm just going to delete that one entirely because I'm not going to use it. I take these two, right click and uh, where is it? Group selected items to turn it into a group. And this is going to be my Fruba group. And I'll lock those two. What that gives me is one thing to drag around that has both images in it. I can resize it. And they're both in exactly the same place. And I just don't have to worry about that. That's going to be helpful for the, the kind of jiggling around effect when we do that. Just make it a little bit bigger. So the two kind of filters that we're going to need, which I mentioned, the first one is coming from StreamFX. And we'll put it on the Fruba Open 
picture. So I'll go to filters and I'm going to add this dynamic mask, which is unreasonably complicated, I think, but occasionally you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. What it lets you do is it takes another input, which can be an image, a video. In this case, it's going to be our self. So we're going to take Fruba Open as the source. And it lets you uh, kind of mix the colors together between them. The, uh, these don't drag around really well because it's all kind of zero to one stuff. But for example, if I take it, this to zero, it's going to take out all the red. Uh, if, I was, if I was getting it from a different input source, in fact, let's take it from closed then I can bring the red back from the other one and you're gonna see some weirdness kind of around the mouth and the bits that have moved and the bits that have changed uh, because it's blending in the red input from the other image and making it the red input of this one. Really, uh, you know, really useful in some incredibly specialized cases, but not actually what we want here. All we're gonna do is leave this one alone right now. It's just gotta be there because that's the one that we're gonna animate. Uh, we'll come back to it in a bit. The other thing we need is a mic input. So you can see I've already got a mic input there. Let's assume that that's the one that people are going to be listening to. It's not. It's not the one you're listening to right now. That's mic on my webcam and you're hearing the mic here. So I'm going to add another input capture, which is going to be the same device. So I should have two now. So there, there's the one that people are listening to. Here is the one and let's rename it to Ruba mic. Uh, I think I can stick this in the group. It doesn't have to be in the group, but it can go in the group just in case I copy it around somewhere. Uh, and this is the one that people are not going to listen to. So I'll go to advanced audio properties, find the Fruba mic, and I'm just going to deselect it from each of these outputs. That makes sure it's never going to go on stream. We are going to mess with the sound and that's, you know, we don't want people to hear it. So. With the Fruber mic now, I want to open up its filters and we're going to use that secret filter I mentioned that comes with the move transition. So we'll go to plus audio move. This is, I don't know why this one's a secret. This is the best, uh, like this is one of the best filters that I've ever come across in OBS and it's a secret. They don't document it, they don't advertise it, uh, but it's really, really cool. Let me grab this. Uh, okay, putting the mic in has messed up my group a little bit. Let's just take that out. Take that out and just stick that up in the corner so we can see it. And back on this audio move. So what this plugin does is it's going to meter the audio. So you can see my audio meter down here. So it's basically looking at various points of that. Uh, and it's going to perform some action. The actions, it's either going to transform, which is move everything around on the screen. Uh, it's going to adjust some setting on part of the source or one of the source's filters. Theoretically, it can adjust whether it's visible or not, uh, but we, we had some trouble with that and couldn't get that to work. And you can just simply enable or disable a filter, which could also work perfectly well for what we're trying to do here. But I think the, the approach I'm gonna show you looks nicer at the end, but I'll come back and show the, the other one. So the first thing we're gonna do is play with that dynamic filter. Very first thing I'm gonna do is disable the, the plugin. As soon as you start filling these in, it's going to pick a setting, it's going to change it, it's going to leave everything messed up. We'll just disable it too, I've got the settings in, then we'll turn it back on. So the source that I'm going to mess with is Ruba Open, which is the, the image we can see on top. The filter is that dynamic mask I just added, and the setting that we want to change. Now this is not a very helpful list, unfortunately, but the one we want to change is this last base value. This is the amount of alpha that's coming in from the original image into what's being rendered. Base value zero, uh, and that factor can go to one. And as soon as I turn this on, you're gonna see the, the mouth has suddenly disappeared and it's moving a bit in time with, with my voice and what I say. It's actually the entire picture. If I turn off the close, then you'll see the whole thing is fading in and out very, very, fair, like quite quickly. Uh, it's still quite dark though. so. Easy way to deal with that is push the factor up. Now, the this is where using this dynamic mask plugin is better than, and that's already giving me a headache, so let's stop that, is already better than using the color correction plugin. Because you go, hey, there's a color correction plugin with opacity. The problem with that is, um, and I'm not going to demonstrate it fully, but I'll, I'll show you a bit in here so you can see. 
the, the color correction opacity goes from zero to one, does exactly what you want, except that this is just in the GUI. This is like, this is, you can, you can only drag it this far. You can only go up to one in, in the text box. You can't type any higher, but the audio move plugin can put in a value that's bigger than one. And it's going to try and, and render it over a hundred percent opacity, which does make some kind of sense mathematically because of the way the, the algorithms all work, but the, it's, it completely messes with basically the brightness. So more or less, once your opacity goes over one, it's like the brightness is shooting up way past and you, you start getting that effect, which is what we were seeing on Fruity Stream earlier because putting in the, the opacity higher than one is actually being rendered. This plugin doesn't do that. So I can put in an opacity uh, as high as I want and it's going to clip it down to the right size. So that's why this one works better. But you can see it's still still not that smooth. Now, there's a few settings we can play with, but the best way to approach this, I find, is to actually mess with the audio rather than trying to mess with all of these settings individually. And this is why we set up a separate mic. So with a separate mic, I can use any of these other audio plugins to change things, to actually change how it sounds, and that's going to have an effect on what the effect does to it rather than trying to fit everything into what I've got. Chances are your mic's already got noise gate on it, maybe compressor, maybe some EQ. Uh, might already be plugged into some other stuff as well. So it's nice to have a clean mic for an effect like this. The main thing you're going to want is an expander. And now to see the expander at work, we're going to look at the, the gauge here. Basically what this does, is, and I'm going to push the ratio way up, is if you see these black dots here, these are kind of showing the the real level of my voice. It's not quite the, the peak is a little bit false here. That's the real level. And what you can see is that when I stop talking, it very quickly drops away. That's because of the expander. If I turn the expander off, it kind of slowly drifts down, hangs out around the bottom for a little bit, and, and it's not real obvious on, on here right now, but it is still kind of flickering in and out just a little bit. So by putting the expander on, it very quickly goes from, from making noise to no noise at all, which means when the audio move comes in, which should be coming in anyway, I don't think it has to be in the right order. Maybe it does. There, then we get a, a much quicker response and it's gonna sit closed when we're mostly being quiet. The meter type can make a difference here. So peak sample is the, the level right at the top here. Just, just, just for reference, if you're looking at this, then that kind of bit in the yellow is going to be the peak sample. Peak true is going to be the, the darker dots there. The And I believe the input peak sample, and yeah, looking at it, it seems to be is just ignoring those other plugins. So... So peak sample I find works pretty well. You can, if I turn off the expander, we're going to see a bit more dancing around, I think. A little bit more. But, but yeah, that's given us that nice smooth on off. Uh, I can push the factor up a bit more and that's going to make it go fully open quicker and closed quicker. I can make this negative with this one if I want a lower base value. And that means that I've got to get a little bit louder before it even opens up. So there's a lot to lot to fiddle with, lot to tweak to make it look realistic, to make it look good. Uh, unfortunately, there's no kind of max level thing. So there isn't really a way to say once it hits this level, just be fully open all the time, doesn't matter how much higher you go. That's kind of the multiplication of, of the factor is the closest thing we've got to that, which can make it do it, but it, ha it kind of has some little, some add, if I'm at exactly the right volume level, which is, hard to do it then then you get some real flickery if the fact is higher can be a little bit hard to to dial in magnitude or the the peak true is going to be a little bit better for that but those those are the basic settings for getting that to look like like it's talking now the dancing or the the shaking around the shaking around is probably the important part this is why we put in a group because i can animate the group as a whole thing we're going to add another audio move plugin for this. Again, I'm going to disable it just so I can get the settings in before it starts changing anything. And it will transform. Now, first thing I've got to pick in the transform is the scene because the transform 
the transforms are for a source in a scene. For the other one, I started with the source because it's a setting on a filter. So you set a filter on a source, every scene that that source is in gets the same filter. So you only get to set it once. The transform is for a source in a scene, what, what's known internally as a scene item. So in this scene, I will take the Fruba group, which for some reason also shows up in the scene list, but doesn't work. So pick the scene. And what I want to transform, I get all of these positions, uh, all of these things to move around. Uh, I can pick the scale, which I don't actually know what this is going to do, and this might mess everything up. Let's just start by copying that transform just in case. And that is going to make me jump in and out as, in time with the voice <laughs> for, for a rather large amount. Uh, but the one that we want is rotation. And I'm just going to take rotation here. Base value is, we'll start with zero. And again, because it's going up to, it's this is degrees. So 360 is going to be a full spin. Uh, if I get my voice that loud, which apparently I can. Uh, that's 3600, yeah. So I'll put it on 90. And you can see now we've got that little bit of rotation coming around. Now, why does it look weird? It looks weird because it's rotating around this top left corner. And that may or may not, it, it, it's also a little bit jerky. So the easing is a nice way to kind of smooth the movement out. If I push that to a little bit further down, it's going to, uh, you know, move or bounce a little bit more gently with the sound. Hey there, Spouse. Yeah, this is a weird music edit. My music edit is not making music today, unfortunately. Uh, but but I, I'm a talking pizza now, just like Fruity, just like Fruity. Uh, so I can do that, but the other thing is because it's rotating around that top left corner, it does look a little bit weird. So we can fix that. We can, and this is probably the main thing that looked different between mine and, and the one that Fruity had on stream. And I'm sure he's following along editing it now. Uh, we're going to go to the group and we'll go to edit the transform. And what matters here is this positional alignment. So what this means is the position settings here are defining where on the canvas this appears, and because it's set to top left, those points define the top left of the pizza. They also define the point that it's going to rotate around. So if I change this to say top right, now those that position has stayed the same, but the pizza is aligned differently, and you can see it's still rotating around that same point. So the rotation's now spinning up. If I change it to center, then we can bring it in this way and just have it rotate straight around the middle. If I put, so the one that I had earlier, I had center right, which was kind of kind of how Fruity's ended up flipped around. Uh, and, and so we have this nice kind of, I can pick my point where it's going to rotate around. Now, it does seem to be moving an awful lot from here. And, and that's largely because there's this big space over on the side of the image that I don't really want. So I can crop. Let's hold down Alt and grab the side of this. It's, it looks weird when it's rotating while I'm doing this, but it works okay. And as I bring this in, uh, I can crop up to the edge of the image and you can see it's still rotating around that point, but because it's closer into the image now, it doesn't look as drastic. It doesn't look as dramatic. And so we have just that nice little bit of rotation going on. Uh, apparently I've done something so I can't close that button. There we go. Uh, and of course I can, I can flip this to make it go that way. You'll notice the rotation is still rotating the same way though. So if I want to make it rotate up, I mean, that's kind of like a nodders, but I can make this negative 90. Uh, hi there, Miz. Glad you could join. Uh, I, I set up this stream specifically for you. I knew you'd be most keen to see this being done. That looks a little bit weird, but if I'm going to have this... Uh, I'm just going to be quiet while I grab that corner because it kept moving. Uh, now, I ha now I am fruity in the corner of my stream, uh, chatting away. I should really just be doing this whole thing on, on, stream on, on screen only view, shouldn't I? That's better. That's better because because you can you don't need me on camera now. I'm no longer necessary. 